Well, this is the truth between the beef between LL Cool J and cannabis. The cannabis, 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 cannabis. <laughs> now, here's the problem. This should have never happened. Like, this wasn't planned. This wasn't scripted. I've heard some people say, man, that cannabis battle was phony, man. That was scripted. It wasn't scripted at all. This was completely accidental. And this is uh, ties into the last video you probably saw with the DMX versus LL Cool J. I would, you could listen to both in succession. But it would put everything together for you in one big, you know, one big swoop. Because uh, when cannabis was coming up, like, everybody was, like, fearing him because of his lyrical content and everything he represented as an MC. Like, he was, his vernacular was, was up there with some of the greats. And he was spitting venom. And he's a battle rapper, this head, you know. And Wyclef is, you know, backing him. And with them coming into prominence with the Fuji album, you know, he's looked at with a lot of respect in the game. And Cannabis is the upcoming artist, you know. So when you see Cannabis on the set or getting ready to make his entrance into the world you know everybody's talking about man this dude cannabis this dude cannabis so everybody's like waiting on it like it's like epic he's gonna blow so they gotta put him on some cameos before he come out see this is different than like today's time today's time they uh they throw people into a battle you know, like, like they throw you in a video, they put you out there, and then they just promote it through social media. Where back in the days, you had to earn your stripes. Like you had to be appearing on other people who's hot records to blow up and shine on them, and try to outshine them as much as you can to be noticed on these records. So they was like, yeah, this dude was on such and such record. So then when your album come out. People's familiar with you, they running by. And with due to social media, people just stir up a records on social media and they automatically hot and ain't nobody even heard them say anything. So going back to subject, cannabis is getting ready to um, he was working on um, I think it was Wyclef's album. He was gonna do a song with Wyclef and he was hanging out with DMX and Redman. And he's out there, they doing cyphers. And they were, man, whoa, 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 this and that. Def Jam at the time and LL came up with the idea of working with Method Man and Redman. You know, not had nothing to do with DMX and nothing. He, you know, Method Man and Redman is who he wanted to work with because of their energy when he was doing How High. And by them both being with Def Jam, that's just a blessing. So there's no middleman to work out. So it was like perfect. You know, so they're working on this concept of the song. And then they were like, well, we got this new rapper too named DMX. We want to bring him out there. He's got a lot of energy and this and that. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And so they brought in DMX. So 4, 3, 2, 1 became the <laughs> the song, which was LL, DMX, and that man, Red Man. That's Four, three, two, one. Now, <coughs> what happened was, all of a sudden, they said, "Man, this guy is ciphering; is killing it." You know, he was ciphering with Red and all them, and they get to hear the guy, and they was like, they tell Leor, like Leor, this is why Klaus guy; he's the new hottest rapper on the street. He's gonna blow. He's gonna take rap right by storm. His name is Cannabis. And he was like, man, if we can work out a way to get him on that record, it's going to make the record even better. So they convinced LL to like get it to happen. And LL was like, 
like okay you know like I'll prove it you know I'll prove uh, cannabis being on the record and get a young guy young MC a chance cause yeah he can rhyme you know L's like yeah he good so he does the rap and L goes back and he lays his vocals last so he's listening to everybody's raps and listening to the song and then he hears cannabis verse so L goes back in the booth and when he was talking about barring the mic off his arm of course you heard that and like L let me borrow that and everybody heard the, the rhyme they didn't think nothing of it nobody thought nothing of it but LL and LL took it that way and LL was like oh he's trying to come at me you know like I gotta show mine his, his, only his attitude felt that way so when he went in there and went and did that line and dropped it and it was like whoa <laughs> you knew he was talking about can like everybody in there knew like you talking about Canada. And when the thing when they went back and found out LL was mad about his line and they told him, Hey, change your rhyme because he was like, dude, I didn't mean to offend nobody. Like, dude, I'm just happy to be, you know, doing this. So LL said, Man, change your rhyme, you know, and there won't be no problems. He was like, alright, cool. He went, changed his line, did a whole new, took the line out, changed the rhyme up, and LL still kept the verse. LL didn't rewrite his. He assumed LL was going to rewrite a verse. And that's the mother of all <laughs> F-ups is the assumption. <laughs> the thinking that LL was going to do something different. So everybody heard the phone call, you know, him and Cannabis had the phone call. He's like, man, I'm on the internet. And they talking about it in Wyoming. They talking about it here. It ain't just for, for dudes on my block. Man, he was like, dude, can you just, we'll do a project together. You know, nobody knows who I'm talking about on the record. That's what he tell them, like, nobody really knows. They just gonna make an assumption. And you can just deal with that until I come back in two months. And I'll be available, then we could drop out, you know, do a project or a song together. And that would crush all this. And that was the plan. LL was going to do that, and Cannabis said okay. But pressure. And the fact that he didn't have a lead single on his album. And now cannabis feel like why Clef kind of pressured him into to doing that and making second round knockout. It's just that when they chose that to be the direction, and they wanted to go in that direction, LL Cool J was busy working, so he wasn't gonna be available for two months. They ran and recorded the song. And LL song when he performed the record after they went in, they performed it at the House of Blues. And LL song he said, "Man, do not put out this record. I'm telling you, don't do it." And Cannabis is all hype. Nah, man. Nah, man. You hurt my feelings, man. Nah, man. You hurt my feelings, man. Nah, man. You hurt my feelings, man. I gotta put it out to the streets, man. They. No, nah, they 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 asking for it, man, because you was wrong, man. It was I'm telling you, don't do this. Don't put this record out. This this is not this is only gonna hurt you. It's not gonna hurt me. You think it's gonna hurt me, but you really doing this to your career. LL told him face to face, this is what's gonna happen to you if you release this record. And he went in the studio, recorded it. He did it so many times. He was with DMX, sitting right there with Cannabis. Cannabis dropped the same verse. He did the last verse on um, on uh, the song when he did his freestyle. He did the last verse from Second Round Knockout. So they get. Wyclef, they produce it, get Mike Tyson in it, 
They make it big. Big promotion for the record. Universal is putting up all this to diss LL Cool J. Def Jam is livid. Leo Cohen is livid. Because it's like they played you to this position to do this. But LL was a little upset with Leo anyway because he told Leo, this is why I said let me choose what I wanted to do because they watching the videos and you threw people that wasn't even on the song. Master P, they got a Master P version. It's some other version with some all southern rappers on the, on the 4321 and it's like... Uh, what is this? You know, and LL's like, you got Master P on my song. You got all these people on my record. I did not give authority for this. And this is going against my contract and what I got under my contract. So he went in there and talked to them. So when the cannabis thing went left and everybody's dissing LL, he's dissing LL Cool J. And, and, and this is his lead single off his album. And LL just said, look, his lead single is a diss record to me to promote his album. That tells you right there, they don't believe this kid has anything that can, can resonate with the public. Because he don't have a single. He don't have a two-hit single. L knew. I was like, I'm going to get rid of him now. Because one, I've been played by my record company. And I've been played by this clown. So what I'm going to do. Is do the release like he did to the break of dawn. And just drop it to the streets he went one nighter into the studio LL did like four verses straight he was hot he did four verses straight he wrote his rhyme right there and lace to me nothing else even needed to be said when nobody thought LL had a position to even come back to this cannabis People were so caught up in the rhyme of second round knockout that when they heard the Ripper Strikes Back, they forgot oh, Cannabis ain't accomplished nothing yet. He just got started. He probably made one dollar in rap. <laughs> You're talking about somebody who's got years in the game. Decades. You talking to a legend, an icon. He's legendary. You just got a single out. How you beat me? He got son. LL Sunday. And then people remember, yeah. Because 99% of your fans don't exist. Yeah, that little is right. What was we thinking? It was Sunday. And that was the battle. Nothing cannabis could say would get him out of that. Because LL just showed you in that rhyme, you will never be able to beat me. You will have to have a stellar career before you can even come back to battle me. You have no career. You have no material to use. You can say all this stuff about me because it's been reported, but I have that history. You have none. You kick verses at dudes' proms. You know, that's, that's just to let you know the level of where he was. And LL just Mike Tyson, he did Watt Clef, anybody that's gonna do with that video. So Dev Jam released it on a double CD of DMX's album. 
So they wanted to sell DMX album so bad that it's dark and hell is hot. It had a buzz already on the street before it even came out. But just to be sure, Def Jam puts out a double disc. One with DMX face on the cover of the disc. And then the other one with DMX face on the cover of the disc. And on that is like all the future projects coming out on Def Jam. Which they made a mistake in the department whoever did the art department, they were not supposed to make the double disc the same picture of DMX. So if you own the earlier copies of It's Dark and Hell is Hot and got the double CD, the one that actually had DMX picture, you saw it had DMX picture on both discs. So you don't know which one is the album and which one is the bonus disc. So when people were stealing people's CDs, you would think your disc is in there you end up playing the bonus CD and your CD is walking down the street. <laughs> and people used to sell this to record stores and be like, I'm selling my DMX disc. And they'll sell them the bonus disc and get money for it like it was a record. I did not do this, by the way. Now, when this is happening, this disc record comes out and it's released by Def Jam and it's on DMX's album. DMX was a little livid because he didn't authorize that either. Like, they putting out a disc record to cannabis. You, you see, they already doing bullshit, Herb. Because DMX didn't even know about it. The record was out, he didn't give a damn. And then somebody told him, like, yeah, man, they even got it on the bonus disc. Man, y'all, they got a disc. Well, they got a disc record, the cannabis, on your disc. So you'll get that LL Cool J bonus disc. So I think they only had those bonus discs in, a, like, about a million like they pressed up like a million of those or maybe 500,000 of those discs, bonus discs. And you, you get that free when you bought the DMX CD. So DMX sold out, sold a million records within like three weeks. <laughs> he was already at like a million too. So everybody had that. And everybody got the LL Cool J song. So before the internet really got a buzz to all of it and it was going viral it was in source magazines it was all over the place because the source still had LL as they they main guy you know like he ain't never had five mics in his, his life but he's on the cover holding five mics because LL Cool J is iconic he transcends through time he's ageless LL is almost 50 you wouldn't know it He's some guy that transcends time. And because he transcends time, and he can go with any genre, it opens doors for him that would usually probably be closed for the average artist. Now, Cannabis, who was in the figure four leg lock, came back with Rip the Jacket. And when he came back with Rip the Jacker, it was a great disc record with somebody who's done some homework of reading LL Cool J's book. And learning some things about LL before he came back. But he went too much into his personal life with his disrespecting his wife, his kids talking about his sexuality and, and all this other stuff and involving other people that he shouldn't have and then to talk about his wife then you basically reiterate the same thing all over again so it, the Rip the Jacker even though it had the beat the I'm Bad beat it just which really is the same beat as Second Round Knockout and they show you at the end of it how it's do 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 it's just been you know slowed down so they show you it was the same beat really that he was using so the flow pattern was still the same but again he had no more material to come from and then cannabis album flops which leads to the next video which is 
the uh, Wyclef versus Cannabis. And we'll go from there. But you're getting them all in succession today. You're getting all three of these at once. So that you can probably get the whole gist of everything that went down. And as far as LL and cannabis, like last year, they, LL brought uh, cannabis on stage. And everything was cool. They squashed their beef and everything is love. But let's go into Wyclef and cannabis. I'm out.